day after Easter. Hope it's a great Easter. But remember, Jesus is alive. He's coming back to judge the earth. He's the judge of the earth. He's also the saviour of the world. Jesus Christ. Not just a prophet, not just a good man, a miracle worker. He's the son of God. He died for your sin. Every single one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Whether you're Muslim, Christian, Jewish, atheist, every single one of us have sinned before God. And we need an atonement for that sin. A sacrifice and Jesus Christ was that sacrifice. He laid down his life for you so that not only you might live and live well in this life, but that you might live on to eternal life and live in heaven with Jesus Christ and the rest of the saints and uh, who also serve Yahweh, the King of Kings, the God of Gods.
praise the Lord. And the Bible talks about the feast of Passover and unleavened bread, which uh, this is, I believe, the last day of the feast of unleavened bread. And uh, this meant that when God gave the law to the Jews, that one day, according to the law of Moses, a Messiah would come and fulfill that law. And part of that law was to be the Passover lamb and to be the unleavened bread. The leaven in that feast stands for sin. So unleavened bread means a man without sin. Now, since the beginning, since Adam, uh, Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, there's been sin within each generation. No matter how perfect we try to live, um, it's what's called original sin so it means that everybody has to die and face the judgment unless they're born again there's only two men who escaped death in history that was Enoch who was the seventh generation from, from Adam and then there was Elijah who was raptured into heaven now we just don't know how these men escaped physical death but they went through famines <coughs> they were Hounded by soldiers, they went through tr great trials in their lives. So really, they, they, they kind of died to the flesh according to the word of God. The Apostle Paul says that you must die to the flesh and live according to the Spirit. But when Jesus came, he lived a sinless, blemishless, spotless life according to your holy books. Do you read? Even the Quran says that Jesus is perfect in his generation. <coughs> Born of a virgin is perfect in his generation. There's a dispute with uh, the Jewish people if Jesus was really born of a virgin, but it does say so. Uh, Bethula, the Hebrew, means young woman, young chastised woman, so that, that's what it means. It means a virgin. And uh, Jesus Christ was born of that virgin. And uh, even Mary herself needed a saviour. You know, some religions venerate Mary more than they do Jesus Christ. But the Bible talks specifically about one Messiah. The son of the living God, born of a virgin, and as announced by John the Baptist, hallelujah, the spotless, blemishless lamb who takes away the sin of the whole world. And all we need to do is believe in him and put our trust in him, hallelujah. You know, our trust can be very much uh, mispositioned when, you know, we have to put a certain trust in our families, our parents, sometimes our brothers and sisters, our friends. So we're always let down in some way by one of them, sometimes all of them. Because Jesus said, if you choose to follow him, your worst enemies shall be that of your own household. That's what Jesus said. So you've got to be determined if you want to follow Jesus Christ. And to the end, it says, those who endure to the end shall be saved. It's not just one magic prayer that you say. You've got to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and decide you want to follow him. But you must continue in that faith. Very often times in the past, uh, in the Old Testament and different, different other times, people lost faith. Like one example is Solomon, who was very, very blessed. And he gave a lot of sacrifices to the Lord. And the Lord gave him exactly what he asked for. More wisdom than any man who ever lived except one. Except Solomon committed the law of sin before the Lord. He married a lot of women, which are not meant to marry excessive women, according to the word of God. They did allow back then to take two or three wives, but it wasn't recommended. But uh, according to the letters of the epistles of Paul, he recommended for the church to try to take one wife and bring up your family and let that be an example to the rest of the church. Hallelujah. But now we see many religions that venerate even marrying young girls very young girls under 10 years old and i can't see how that exalts god but they see fit that's what they want to do i'm not going to go into all that side of things but what i want to tell you is that jesus lived a very sinless spotless and perfect life and he was the blemishless lamb of god who, who was sacrificed for your sin hallelujah and uh, you know as jesus says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and so if you're a christian if you're born again if you proclaim jesus you're not going to be ashamed of the gospel you're going to spread the good news of jesus christ you're going to 
live accordingly, dress accordingly, you're going to be a glowing example to your family and friends around you. Me, myself, even my family weren't, weren't Christian, so I have to live my life as an example to them. You know, Jesus Christ is my first and my last, my Messiah, my support in my life, but you know, I have to be an example to them as well. It's very difficult to do that. It's after you know family, there have been real born again Christians, there have been Jehovah Witnesses, they've been in the Catholic Church, they've been atheists, they've been in the Church of Scotland, all through that stuff. And uh, but is the message of the gospel being preached? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Is there an understanding that you come to when you ask Jesus into your life and Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets? He didn't come to invent a new religion. You know, it was the Passover lamb who took away the sin of the world, not the Easter bunny. Hallelujah. A bunny never laid an egg. All that stuff is paganism. A lot, a lot of religions know that. The Jehovah Witnesses know that. And yet they don't know that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the living God. It's very sad. You can know a lot of truths. You can work out a lot of things. But unless we are convinced of who Jesus is and what he came to do, we shall die in our sins. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, he's talking about the Messiah, unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. That's what he said. And that's what he's saying to each and every one of us today. Unless you believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, you shall die in your sin. It's very, very important how you understand why Jesus came and what he did for you. Hallelujah. See, there can only be one Messiah. Even in the Quran it says that Jesus is the Messiah. A lot of Muslims don't know that. Surah 4 says that it talks about Jesus being the Messiah. But it can mean an awful lot of different things to an awful lot of different people. His name means deliverer and salvation. Hallelujah. Deliverer. He came to deliver his people from their sin and then to give us salvation through his spirit. That's what Jesus came to do. He didn't come to give us religion. We've already got about 40,000 or so different religions in the world. He came to give us salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Luke 24. He says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared. Certain others were with them. They found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. They entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again and they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest and it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran into the sepulchre. Stooping down, he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at which was come to pass. Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he asked unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said to him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast not known the things which have come to pass here these days? And he said to them, What things? And he said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed, and worked before all the people, and how the chief priests and their rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this today is the third day since these things were done. He and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre. When they found not his body they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it so as the women said but him they saw not then he said unto them O fools slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken ought not Christ to have suffered these things to enter into glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them all the scriptures the things concerning himself and they drew near unto the village which they went and he made as though he would have gone further but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is towards evening and the day is far spent and he went to tarry with them and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and he said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? They rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found eleven gathered together, and them that were with him, seeing the Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And he told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them, in breaking bread and they thus speak Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them peace be unto you but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit said unto them 
Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you have seen me I have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And he gave them a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, which I was yet with you, that all the things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, This, this it is written, Thus it behoved Christ to suffer to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he parted from them and carried up to heaven. And they worshipped him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. Amen. So that is a rendition from Luke 24 of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He, he rose from the dead, but also his blood that we shed atones for our sin. That is the good news of the gospel. We don't have to suffer and die for our own sin. All we need to do is repent, believe, be baptized in his name, and be filled with the Spirit of God, sealed onto the day of redemption. Jesus has paid the price for your, yours and my sin. That is the good news. You don't have to suffer for your sin and then go to hell. What's the point of that? Because God does judge everyone. Everyone who's ever lived, God judges them. And if you don't want to be with God, what's that? The Korean guy, Tim Jong-un, he, he's going to hell, I think. He, he was going to hell, whether he gets it or not, I don't know. I think he probably, well, according to the word of God, well, we're coming into a big war, you know what I mean? According to Daniel chapter 11, it talks about the king of the north and the king of the south, and they do battle three times. So these are the three world wars. That's uh, basically the job of witnesses. None of these false pseudo-Christian organizations teach the truth, teach real prophecy. But yes, there will be a third world war. And it speaks of this in the book of Revelation, that God has a, a, a contention with all the nations. He has a contention with all nations. doesn't matter if you uh, make a new nation, nation of Islam, nation of Israel, whatever nation it is, you've got sin in it. And God's got a contention with whatever nation is on this earth. But the point is that when you're born again, you're sealed on to the day of redemption. 